our world is full of diagrams. Graphic representations of everything from the solar system to the hidden origins of life. They have a unique ability to express complex ideas simply and an intellectual and artistic beauty that has the power to inspire awe and change our perceptions. In the last half century, one diagrammatic image stands above all others. It represents a scientific breakthrough that's been voted the most significant in the 20th century. More important than penicillin, or the contraceptive pill, or the first working computer. It's this, the double helix, or to put it another way, the secret of life. This is what our DNA looks like. This sculpture commemorates the fact that nearly 60 years ago, a discovery was made for the very first time of how we are built, how our genes are copied. It was a discovery that paved the way for the mapping of the human genome, cloning, genetic fingerprinting, and could ultimately lead to cures for diseases like cancer. But the double helix has become so well known and loved that we now find it in a whole range of art projects and consumer products across the world. So how did this elegant idea become one of the great scientific discoveries in history? And how on earth did the structure of a human molecule become such a worldwide celebrity. The discovery in Cambridge of a structure for DNA, the molecule that enables our genes to be passed down the generations, was made in February 1953 by Francis Crick and James Watson. Whilst others had laboured for years to find the structure, Crick and Watson had a touch of genius and did it in under 18 months. They announced it over a pint in this pub. Their achievement would eventually earn them the Nobel Prize. But the first the wider world knew of it was when Crick and Watson published a short article in Nature magazine. Included in the article was a diagram. The diagram was created by Francis Crick's wife, Odile, who was a professional artist. Although the original diagram hasn't survived, the article where it appeared has. DNA was too small to see under a microscope. The physicist Crick and the biologist Watson had worked out that the elusive shape of the molecule had to be a double helix on the basis of X-rays of DNA crystals and the models they built. The challenge for Odile was to create a drawing that captured the three-dimensional shape in a two-dimensional diagram. So this is the article in Nature where they announce the world, the discovery of the structure of DNA. Um, it's from Saturday, April the 25th, 1953. Here we are. Uh, a structure for deoxyribose nucleic acid. Um, the announcement of probably the most important discovery in biology um, of the last century. <laughs> but they describe it uh, quite sort of unassumingly. It has not escaped our notice that the specific pairing we have postulated immediately suggests a possible copying mechanism for the genetic material. It's wonderfully understated. Watson later described this as possibly the most famous event in biology since Darwin. What we have here is not only a description of the structure of DNA, but also the way that it makes exact copies of the genes it contained inside it. And over on the left here is the diagram that Odile Crick did of the structure of DNA.
It expresses everything that's so wonderful about a diagram. It's not a picture of the messy molecular structure. It just gets down to the essence of what's so important about this structure. According to the American biologist Terry Sinofsky, it may be the most famous scientific drawing of the 20th century in that it defines modern biology. And what you see are the two ribbons going in a spiral or a sort of helix which will unravel and copy themselves and the rods between the strands which are the, the pairings of this sort of the genetic code that that represents. There are also two little uh, arrows which indicate a direction um, on these strands. Actually, the way the molecule is put together means that each of these strands has a direction. So one goes up and the other goes down. This is the first time the world had ever seen the structure of DNA. It's a breathtakingly original diagram. Every human cell contains a copy of the human genome a string of three billion molecular components called nucleotides. They're known by the letters A, T, C and G, and they're linked together by chemical rods. The cell is like a computer. It's programmed so that during reproduction, the double helix unravels. Each strand copies itself, every A pairing up with a T, every C with a G. In this way, a new double helix forms. Because each of us inherits a particular permutation of these pairs, we're all different. What Odile Crick had done was to make this incredibly complicated biological process visible. Odeal was a trained artist. She'd studied in Vienna in the 1930s and had then gone on to St. Martin's in London and the Royal College of Art. She did occasional portraits of her husband, but most of her work was focused on the female nude. Molecular structures weren't really her thing. Francis had given her a sketch that he'd made himself so that she would have something in mind when she drew her own. It's not really quite so striking, it has a kind of uh, unfinished, rather cluttered look to it. But Odile got the point and turned these rather vague impressions into a memorable image, at the power of which she probably didn't realise at the time. Because this double helix has become a symbol not just of DNA or biology or even of scientific discovery, it's become an internationally recognised icon in its own right. One of the remarkable things about the drawing by Odile Crick is that it has never been bettered. Almost everybody who uh, happened on the double helix in its early days realised that the beauty was part of the proof that it was right. In other words, something this beautiful, this simple, this clear could not be wrong. Um, the structure just fell together in this extraordinary way. And for once, the truth was beautiful. Many people described Francis Crick as the cleverest man they'd ever met. He had the most tremendous capacity for absorbing material, analyzing it, understanding it, uh, and coming through with insights uh, and with questions that, that drilled to the heart of matters. On the day, 28th of February 1953, when the, the, the penny dropped and famously Crick went into the pub and said, we've discovered the secret of life, he also went back that evening and said to uh, Odile, um, I've made a rather important discovery today. And Odile told me that she um, didn't take any notice of this because he was always saying things like that. Their collaboration on the actual diagram was quite important. How did that um, evolve? Well, when you think about how the discovery was made by Watson and Crick, uh, they then had to sit down and prepare it for publication. And Watson drafted in his sister to do the typing, and Crick drafted in his wife to do the diagram, which was a very good idea because uh, neither Watson nor Crick were any good at drawing themselves. They, they, they knew what they'd 
discovered, but it was quite hard to put it into a simple diagram. But what's beautiful about what she does is that she simplifies it. She takes out the extraneous detail and leaves just a pair of ribbons wrapped around each other, linked by simple rods, which gets across the, the essential ingredients of the image without going into too much detail. What sort of impact did the uh, diagram and the paper in nature have at the time? It actually was a pretty, pretty well a damp squib. Very, very few people took much notice. The professional biochemists weren't that interested. They didn't think it was important. The geneticists also. This was uh, the spring of 1953. Stalin had just died. Uh, the Queen was about to be crowned. Everest was about to be climbed. A lot happened in, in that spring. The cracking of the secret of life is essentially what it represents. And that took a long time to sink in. So when did the double helix begin to have an impact on the world's psyche? To understand that, we have to go back to a time before Odile Crick's diagram. Because the surprise of the original discovery had been that something so important and invisible as DNA should turn out to be so beautiful. Molecules hadn't generally been thought to be attractive, so why should this one? The great mystery confronting scientists after World War II was how genes managed to make copies of themselves. Scientists in centres like Cambridge and London had known about DNA for some time. But in the 1940s, they started to ask whether it could be linked to the idea of heredity and gene transmission. The trouble was, it was very difficult for them to actually see a DNA molecule, establish its structure, understand how it works. Would everything have to be based on hypothesis? What changed the entire course of events was the research carried out by two scientists working not in Cambridge, but here at King's College in London. Morris Wilkins and Rosalind Franklin were experimenting with X-ray crystallography. By shining X-rays at DNA samples and creating a pattern of diffracted dots on photographic paper, they hoped to deduce the structure of the molecule. In May 1952, Rosalind Franklin took this photograph, Photo 51, now famous in DNA history. This is the molecule seen from the side and what the pattern of dots revealed was that the structure must be a spiral, or in scientific terms, a helix. This is the Crick's house in Cambridge with its characteristic golden helix above the door. When Watson and Crick saw photo 51, they were galvanised and started trying to create models to create a 3D structure that would explain the evidence in Rosalind Franklin's X-ray. Eventually, they hit on a model that worked. A double helix. Double because the genetic code on one side determined what should be on the other. It was beautifully efficient and explained exactly how DNA copied itself. This was the secret of life. The mechanism for passing on our genes and creating a new generation. And Odile Crick gave it an elegant simplicity. I'm kind of fascinated by the question of how this beautiful design has conquered the world and has become, well, the word is rather hackneyed, but iconic. I mean, sure, the science is very important. Crick and Watson won the Nobel Prize in 1962 for the discovery of the structure of DNA. But Rosalind Franklin's photograph number 51 was equally important in the discovery, yet isn't anywhere near as internationally well known. So what is it the public finds so exciting about the double helix? In the first few years following the breakthrough, it was an image that only circulated within the scientific community. But that changed five years later, when the BBC brought the double helix to a wider audience with its first television program on the subject. Here you have two chains in the molecule, helical chains running along one and then the other one running back there. 